All right, we got a report now. He's 30 seconds out. Let's watch for this aircraft now. I, I heard him a minute ago, so he must have been, like, getting into the area. So now they just radioed in and saying 30 seconds. I see a yellow square up at the top of the screen. Don't know if I can see the airplane. You can kind of see the generic background of the desert for the skybox, which is a little confusing, but let's see what happens. Oh, okay, here we go. All right, air support is inbound, boys. Here it comes. This is going to be it. Lots of enemies there. We got to hit them. Even friendly forces are firing from the distance over here. Oh, yeah, they're firing all the way over there. All right, we need that air support. Broken schnitzel. Come on, where is it? Attacking. Here we go. Let me see those bombs, baby. Here he comes. Oh, I can hear him. He flew over. Give me those bombs. Yeah! Hell yeah! Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome to our first look at Combat Mission Shock Force, a game available now on Steam, an RTS that is also a turn-based game, too, if you want it to be. There's lots of options, different settings, and this is a very diverse and very detailed game in terms of tactics and other, uh, I guess, strategies that you can deploy to defeat your enemy in battle, including some multiplayer, and a scenario editor, and there's campaigns, and there's quick battles, so there's a lot of stuff here, and in fact, I think Combat Mission may have had some other stuff from World War II. It's definitely a, uh, a game that, a series that's gone on for a while, hence Shock Force 2 coming out, featuring NATO, British, M Marine forces, and U.S. forces for a campaign that you can uh, pick and choose the DLCs if you want to, and of course, uh, simulate things in terms of like call to arms or uh, meta war like style well i like rts's and i hope you do too so make sure you smash that like button to see more on the channel as i really want to see a lot of support to bring you more of these these games are uh, few and far between i'd say as uh, these games are kind of a little bit more niche you need to know a little bit more about the vehicles and how infantry works and such so thanks again for the support and being the best community on youtube and thank you for subscribing and just hanging out you guys are the best, so that is for you and all your support. Well, today I wanted to play as the Germans because they got some pretty sweet tanks, and I wanted to see some NATO action here as we jump over to uh, the Middle East. I think we're going to try to take Aleppo uh, with these forces here. Uh, but as you can see, as I click on all the different campaigns, you'll see which DLC becomes active for the campaign. But also there's the ability, as I mentioned, to make your own campaigns and download others from the Steam Workshop, uh, which makes it a little bit more worth it as it brings some more longevity to the game and more challenge. And of course, I think once developers make a game and uh, give it to a community, a community can do a lot more work in terms of making it better and flourish longer and make things more interesting. Hence, Rob's realism for Metal War Assault Squad 2. Well, let's go ahead and fight here and see what we can do with our German forces. This will be a little bit of a blind first look uh, playthrough, but again, like I mentioned, there's turn base and real time that you can do. So we'll go ahead and do a real time uh, playthrough on this one. And if you want to join a friend and play these campaigns, you can do that as well. So this, I believe, gives us the overview of the campaign itself, and then we'll see our mission briefing after things load in. Now, the models in this game are pretty cool. Things look pretty good. It definitely is not Men of War Assault Squad 2, which is really well known on the channel. So it's really a step back from graphics and a step forward towards realism in terms of tactics and all the things that you can do, such as calling in off-map artillery or airstrikes from F-18s. If you happen to play as the U.S. Marines, it'll tell you everything that you have. Here we have some fire support here. Uh, you see the, uh, the Zook 2000 and mortars, too, that we have access to, as well as the friendly forces that... Uh, are our starting forces, Panzer Grenadier Company, with tanks and such. So we should have martyrs. There's our tanks right there. I believe those are Leopard 2A6s. And as you can see just up here, yep, Leopard 2A6. And uh, we have plenty of other vehicles to choose from. Uh, these are Martyr 1s. And I believe we have Martyr 2s maybe over here. Yep, looks like that those are uh, Martyr 1A5s, actually. Uh, so we have two groups of those and also some Martyr 1A5s there. So lots of Panzer Grenadiers here ready to go into battle multiple groups on the roadways here and this gray area I think marks that it, it's actually a blue area that marks our our starting area where we can move our forces around if we want to before the start of battle they'll give us about an hour and 40 minutes to complete this mission which is astronomically high but really what you're trying to do is complete your objectives with little to no losses or wounded and we'll have to take these areas I believe in green so once everything has been set up, we can then move across the battlefield. The battlefield looking kind of bland compared to other games, but this really allows us to simulate larger scale battles without too much slowdown and uh, clunkiness from 
PCs that really can't run that type of thing. And there's a lot of stuff that'll be going on screen, especially when you have all your tanks moving and giving your troops orders. It's kind of a little bit more important that it runs smoothly versus looking pretty. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look here at what we want to do first. Well, obviously the tanks have got to roll into battle. And I think what we'll try to do is we'll take this high ground here and we'll Anakin our asses into uh, this area there. We'll make sure that they uh, get anakin and we'll see if we can shoot at uh, forces that might be inside the town. I don't think the enemy has any tanks, but they probably do have some sort of ATGMs or whatnot, so we'll just go see what happens. I'm not really here to uh, score high kills and show how to play the game correctly. I just want to kind of see how it works and functions and uh, get my hands on it and see what happens for explosions on both sides. So let's go ahead and grab these tanks here. We'll tell them to move slow towards this village here. There's a nice little tutorial that explains a few things in the game, but really, a lot of the time, as you guys know, the real tutorial is just playing the game itself. There's a lot of little options here to uh, to uh, adjust your camera and whatnot. And uh, let's see. I think you need to use the arrow keys to actually rotate the camera, which, you know, I'm used to middle mouse button. But I guess this is a long time series where there's been games, I believe, on World War II. And uh, some of these games actually feel like D-Day on the American side to me in terms of uh, tactics being more about flanking and... Uh, trying to conserve troops and trying to, you know, fast action, fast response to enemy movements. And uh, I really in have enjoyed some games that allow you to play either real-time strategy or turn-based that way. Well, let's go ahead and move our uh, Panzer Grenadiers and tanks into position. Let's see how things go. And the tanks will move off the road then. Let's take a look at how they look. Oh, really? That's cool. Well, you can actually see the wheels moving and the tracks going. Exhaust coming out of the back end of the vehicle. And the tracks seem to be responding to the ground quite nicely. Alright, so we're going to try to see some action over here by the town. If we get a vehicle knocked out, that'd be kind of cool. If we uh, take some losses or something just to see how things play out. Uh, let's see. Looks like we have our commander unit here. I think our artillery might be in one of these vehicles. I think the mortars might be able to... Uh, transport themselves via a vehicle, so that'll be kind of cool. We've told our tanks to move forward slowly, so we'll close in on this town and see if we can fire at some targets that might be uh, otherwise hidden inside of these buildings, and we'll see if we can hit anybody who happens to peek out. All right, so the Martyr 1, I've actually driven one of these before. They're very cool uh, vehicles, quite fast as well, pretty well armored and uh, very capable of achieving high speeds. Uh, but really good armor, 20 millimeter on top. They also have the, an ATGM. Uh, again, a 20 millimeter up there and a machine gun too. Uh, so a 7.62, 20 millimeter with armor piercing and HE rounds and also an ATGM, which is pretty good at taking out enemy vehicles uh, from a medium range distance. It's definitely not your first choice for taking out enemy vehicles, but if you happen to get into a pinch, you can overwhelm the enemy defenses. So if they happen to have like a T-55 or something rolling around, we can take it out if we get a line of sight on it, but our tanks are probably going to be our main uh, source of uh, destruction here. Yeah. Alright, they're moving into position. Keep in mind, I've given them orders to move slowly. So we'll try to make it into the towns and see what happens. Oh, interestingly enough, our martyrs are sticking to the roadways here. Looks like they are going to be moving that way. I guess it... Uh, also, I think your vehicles take damage over time in terms of, like, wear and tear. So you can see our defenses here. Like, this vehicle is very good at deflecting... Um, small caliber rounds and pretty okay at like medium size rounds like uh, heavier machine gun ammo uh, but also you can see where we might take damage from our vehicle our, our durability so uh, the 20 millimeter if you're firing long enough can take damage everything takes wear and tear like the tracks do and you can be immobilized as well if you happen to hit a mine or if uh, a round lands in your tracks you're gonna have a bad time all right it's time to start the attack on the town so let's go ahead and give our tanks orders to uh, push up into the town and uh, we'll try to hold this high ground here. Also, I've noticed that from time to time, it seems your tanks, for whatever reason, kind of disappear. Strain that tank out. And we'll close in with our tanks and see if we can spot the enemy. And we'll see if we can get a martyr over here, too. And we'll start spotting with the infantry. And we'll have the infantry uh, start giving uh, positions to the tanks. Let's see if we can report back enemy positions. And we'll make our way up to the top here. All right. All right. So, units are pushing in. Oh, wow. I wonder if this tank will actually be able to push through the house. Looks like we gave an order to go through a house, but we don't want that happening. All right. Tanks are moving in nice and slow. Imagine waking up and looking out your window to see that. Oh. 
enemy uh, forces there taking a hit. Our tank's already firing at an enemy position. And it looks like there are wounded inside. Tanks are opening fire and able to identify targets from there. Very nice. So the main objective really is to clear out resistance in the town and then defend those areas in green. So we've got to defend uh, that small section out in town squares after clearing the whole town. And what we'll probably need to do is get our... Uh, these are the objectives. So we'll have to capture three positions, but really remove all resistance from the towns. Which seems to be like two or three of them. Okay, that's interesting. A round landing close. Right there. Are they trying to RPG us from a million miles away? Not a good call on their side. Oh, and get wrecked! Friendly tank opening fire. Knocking out whoever was in there. Machine gun rounds going out. Let's see if another round hits. Troops on top of that building. Possibly. Wow, that, I think that guy fired an RPG and it only landed here. That's a really long range for an RPG, but also very dumb to fire it that far. All right, well, the tanks are in a good position here. And we'll bring up the infantry then. And again, with an hour and like 35 minutes on the mission, we may as well move slow, take our time, watch enemy movements. And this, of course, is like the first mission, so things are kind of meant to be easy. Let's push up and see if we take any damage. We'll push this way to uh, uh, Objective Frings, and let's see what we can do. Okay. Also, I think it's kind of weird when you click on a vehicle, it makes other vehicles disappear. I guess it kind of helps you to identify which one you've selected, but uh, sometimes it's inconsistent, so I don't know what that is all about, where vehicles will disappear like that. Also, some vehicles don't seem to want to take... Some go through the farm, and some don't want to go through the farm. Some don't want to move at all. I don't know. All right, well, we got plenty of reserves back here, just if, in case we need them. We'll go ahead and try to open up on Ferings and move that way. We'll also take our tanks up here and secure enemy positions. We'll have our troops bail out here in a second. And uh, we're going to drop off the infantry probably behind the tanks and then have them move in through the farm fields. Another thing is, too, if you misclick on an objective and you want to move the, uh, if you want to move where it goes to, you can always readjust the waypoints on the way. So if you want to adjust the route, you can do that. Okay. Let's see what happens here. We've got, uh, in reserve, I believe we have, let's see, four units there and a few other units here, too. And we also have a recon unit. And I believe this is for calling in off-map artillery. This is a observer section, so you can actually call in artillery. Most vehicles can do that, but these guys are just a little better at it. So let's bring them nearby, too. We'll have them dismount there, so that way they can uh, help bring in the fire support. Otherwise, the only fire support we need is these tanks can just direct fire on buildings. We've got another infantry group there. I see smoke. Tank must have just fired at it. Let's get a closer look at these tanks. Again, nicely modeled. It's a step back in the... You know, the decoration from the world, I guess that's what you get with these combat mission games. But they've made so many of them uh, from World War II on, like, for example, the, the German side and the American side and the Soviet side. And then you've got modern vehicles and modern armies that they just kind of keep creating uh, new scenarios out of either stuff from history or uh, possible history. You know, alternative history or plausible scenarios with vehicles and units that actually exist. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's go ahead and deploy our infantry and see what happens here. I don't know exactly how to do this. I'll have to learn. We can also use um, tactics like hull down, hunting, and reverse if we need to. So you can do all sorts of varieties of getting uh, troops to where they need to and then deploying them. I wonder how we get this infantry out. So if we select the infantry rather than the vehicle and tell them to dismount, I think that'll make them come out. Yeah, there we go. So the uh, back of the vehicle actually comes down and troops will hit the dirt as we kind of are under fire. And they'll make their way towards the objective uh, or wherever we may have marked. And again, if you misclick like that and you've created a crazy little pathway for them to follow, you can just straighten it out and you're good to go. So we'll just have these troops go this way and secure the road. So now they can work in conjunction with that Martyr 1. The Martyr 1 there with the 20 millimeter can mow anything down here as well as the tanks. And we'll have these infantry do the same. I think what we'll do is we'll just kind of go directly into the town. There's really no way for us to flank behind it. The map doesn't go that way. So we'll go from this uh, eastern side 
in the western, uh, southwestern side on our side and uh, attack that way if we can. All right, so the martyr is ready to go. Bring that up a little bit. Provide uh, 20 millimeter support if needed or Milan. And we'll get this uh, one going up here as well. Good for observation. We'll have the tanks provide heavy fire. So uh, essentially the best way to do this will be to have two operations going at the same time. I'd say tactically it'd probably be a good idea to secure this part of the town and then have forces secure this part of the town so that way you uh, can flank all the forces here at uh, Klingsman. So what you'd probably want to do is hit this side of town and get forces pretty much ready to go into the town while you're also attacking this town at the same time. Have the tanks here to support both operations and then uh, close in and capture all the rest of the town. And then have your forces simultaneously while you started to, to finish off this town. Bring them a little closer, just a little closer. Just, just sneak up there. And you can have everybody fire from this position and this position to take out Franks. And nobody's going to ask any questions. It's fine. It's all good, right? It's fine. Just open up fire. That's all you got to do. Ah, I see. I've selected this infantry rather than the vehicle, so it explains uh, what they're doing and where they're going. Totally fine, though. We're probably not going to see the full operation in an hour and a half. is a lot of time just to get an operation done. But luckily, the enemy's already suffered more casualties than us. And it looks like this uh, unit has gotten out on foot and is moving towards their position. Let's go ahead and have these guys just move. We don't need to slow move anywhere. Is there a way to cancel this? Uh, let's see here. These guys could have gotten out on foot and just walked here. They didn't really need the Jeep. But let's go ahead and do that. Once they reach that target, we'll just tell them to move uh, here. Uh, not target armor, but uh, just move to this position. Good. They'll get off their uh, bellies and onto their feet and start finding uh, targets for the artillery. And then we can bring our vehicles into flank. So while you're doing this, you know, again, we're playing this just for demonstration purposes. This is just to kind of show off what it does and how it works. And it's a good learning opportunity as well. Oh, it looks like we actually got uh, reinforcements arriving too. So I guess we're supposed to get reinforcements throughout the battle. Nice. wonder where they came in from. Oh, it's right here. These wheeled vehicles now. Very nice. So now we've got some really fast armored personnel carriers. So these would be perfect for flank operations. So we can go ahead and tell these vehicles to just haul. Let's bring these in real close and see what they can do. Camera's just, uh... I guess the biggest battle in this game is the camera. In order to give orders, you do need to, like, look at where your vehicles are. Alright, we'll have these two flank. Looks like we also have some engineers with us. So if we happen to run into a minefield or something like that, we can have them take care of that. I would like to see a vehicle get destroyed very quickly. But we have our infantry coming up now. And they're going to be moving uh, on their bellies, I guess, to get to the positions. They're moving slow, so let's keep closing in. And let's have the other squad do that, too. So two infantry squads, not a lot to call in here. But with all this firepower sitting up here, I'd probably want to divert some manpower to attack in the village in the center. It's not an objective, but this is just too valuable to give up because the enemy can split us in half. So if we, cop if we capture that and eliminate enemy forces there... We can then push in on both sides. Ooh, did I just hear an ATGM? Nope. I do like how it shows where the enemy was last spotted. Our tanks did open fire on where they thought they saw enemies. And where they might be currently. Now we can also tell our uh, vehicles to move fast, quick, move, or slow. So the fastest that they can move is fast, fast and quick, if you really want to move uh, very, very fast. And I think if you tell them to move faster, they might be uh, probably more detectable on their side and less able to detect enemy units. So slow is the way to go if you're trying to find enemies. And since we know the enemy's inside the town, we just basically got to tighten the noose very slowly. Get closer and closer until we identify targets and have multiple tanks take them out. There's no armor to fight from what I've seen so far. But there definitely will be armored battles in the game. And uh, there's definitely got to be scenarios where that's set up to, to be that way. Let's bring a vehicle up. We got our martyr arriving here on this side. We'll drop those troops off too. Infantry is making their way in. So this is just kind of the uh, prep for the main operation, which is to close in on the town. Once we've started to get pretty much within like maybe... Uh, 500 meters of the town, that's when it's going to really start getting spicy. And all of the tanks and armored vehicles that are nearby will be able to provide cover fire when our infantry gets a little closer. Let's see what happens if we move fast from that 
current position. I do like how the commands are set up here. You really, this is more about, instead of reacting to movements, it's more about planning out. And it feels a lot more like a, um, it feel, feels a lot more like a real strategy game. It, it is being played real time, but it, it just kind of feels like this is how you're going to have to give out the orders, is knowing your moves ahead of time rather than reacting to the enemy. You really want to know uh, what to do ahead of time, because if you put a tank out in the middle of a field and it's not supposed to be there, you're uh, it's going to be really hard to get it out of where it was to where it's supposed to be. Okay, engineers are here. Let's go ahead and see if we can get them to uh, go on a hunt now. Let's see if we can get them to dismount. Let's see how that works. Okay, we got tanks ready to cover. So I'm bringing in these sappers first, just in case there was mines and such in front of us. Let's continue to move forward with some of these vehicles. Oop. Didn't want to do that. Don't know if there's a way to actually cancel waypoint after you misclick like that. But I guess the best way to, to deal with that is just to select the vehicle and then just straighten it out if you need to. Not too big of a deal. Gives you plenty of time to react. Alright, infantry is dismounting. Oh, and we're going to fire. Nice. Cool, now we can see some combat. Tanks are probably going to open up on that. Enemy forces here at this uh, walled building. Opening up from the roof. German forces firing back. Wow, we got like a dishka up on top of that building. That's a big boy. They're keeping him suppressed. Yeah, that vehicle's taking some hits, but we'll be alright with that. Now we should see some of the tanks give us some action here. Oh. Looks like he's disappeared. Let's close in with the tanks a little bit. We'll have the tanks push forward. There we go. Tanks are already firing. Nice. So this seems like the best way to get close enough to the enemy to really uh, be able to call in commands and stuff on top of them. Let's get that infantry to deploy. There's not too many enemy combatants here. And we've really taken out a lot of them. They're actually fleeing now. They're they're running the hell away. So it's good we got a vehicle over here. Friendlies are opening up on them. Nice. We'll have to get the rest of our forces here. We got infantry and vehicles dismounting. Let's get this other one here. Let's see if we can bring this armored personnel carrier closer. Lots of infantry over there. Wow, that's actually quite a bit of troops. Anybody who's grayed out seems to be wounded. So combatants that could be down, or where they were last spotted. Looks like they're getting the hell out of there. They can't withstand the might of four tanks. And our tanks are pushing in. There they go. Yeah, we don't have to get too close. Not with a tank. They can op up, open up on that town all day. Now what I'd really like to do is get our martyrs close. And see if we can get them uh, to bring in the pain from the southern side. Yep, just where we are now. Let's go ahead and get our vehicles deployed. So we'll try to get these martyrs as close as possible. There should be a way to command like a whole group of them, but it's just a little tricky to... You can't click and drag to select all. You can double click to select all the same units of a type, but it uh, becomes a little more cumbersome to command them all as a group. Uh, where'd our vehicles go? They like completely disappeared. There they are. Alright, so we got infantry standing by. Two vehicles here. These, I believe, have MG3s on top of them. So these are great vehicles to have here. Double machine guns to chew up anything there. And they're tightening their defenses around this uh, public square. So uh, a lot of units have been spotted going north. So they've gotten the hell out of the southern part of town. So now's a great point to bring in all of our infantry and see if they can uh, tighten the noose even further. Alright, more infantry here. Let's go ahead and get them out. Starting to get a little bit more familiar with the game, a little bit more feeling more comfortable. I'm enjoying this so far. The ability to command troops and such is quite quite fun in this aspect. It feels, again, more, more of a strategic men of war. Uh, you lose out on some of the graphics, but what you gain is instead of a highly detailed town, you gain g bigger towns, giant towns, large sections and regions with multiple cities to attack or defend. Okay, let's close in. The Germans doing a good job of causing some trouble here over the enemy. Okay, let's go ahead and keep closing in. 
Oh, didn't want to do that. Got to remember to right-click afterwards. It seems to get stuck. There's a little bit of lag in the game, so like when I right-click, I have to do it a couple of times. But I'm assuming the game is processing quite a bit of commands now from the enemy forces that are moving around. All those, re all those retreating forces are taking up all my CPU. Cool how there's various uh, roads, too. It's not just dirt roads. There is, there is a little detail here. And I'm assuming what it's going to simulate is dirt roads. Vehicles can only travel on at a certain speed as we're an asphalt road. A uh, wheeled vehicle would be a godsend on a wheeled uh, surface with wheels. That is uh, like asphalt. All right, tanks are closing in now. I don't think we got to get much closer than this. However, we will need to... Oh, there's go some rounds. We will need to kind of cut towards this way. We'll keep the tanks here and eventually secure this town. And like I said, everything pretty much south of this large road here uh, will have to be taken over by our infantry. First kind of scanned by the tanks and infantry, and then uh, the infantry will push into the position. Uh, looks like uh, Frings hasn't really had any combat yet. I hear a lot of action now. Great to see that. Oh, yeah. Is that a martyr firing off? Hell yeah, get that 20 millimeter going. Good position for this one. Enemies in ambush positions with those machine guns and such on the roofs, so we know we got trouble out there. A lot of vehicles closing in now. Okay, I would prefer you to not turn your armor, but just go this way. There we go. All right. Whoa! Is that artillery? Okay, let's get these infantry units ready to go. These guys are moving up uh, slow. we got plenty of time now. Now that we've kind of reached the city, we really want to take some of our time, uh, about the next 20 minutes, to secure the southern section. And that'll uh, kind of focus here. So we'd probably take 20 minutes to do this, 20 minutes to do that, and then another 20 minutes to secure that section up there, and then any other cleanup. So not more than, uh, like, a, probably with 20... Well, we'd probably have 20 minutes to spare, so if we do everything very slowly... Of course, trying to conserve the lives of our troops. I don't know if we can actually occupy buildings. Let's see how that works. How does garrison work? Ah, you can tell them to go into the roof. Nice. So we can get our infantry up top and spot. And uh, they can give orders from this building here. And it really looks like we have no mines or anything. I was really expecting a lot more defenses. But let's get our troops to uh, push in and start capturing buildings. And peeking up top. Infantry's closing in. I see some more rounds coming in. That must be ma off-map artillery. That's like a smoke round now that they fired. What the hell's the purpose of that? Not very smart, the enemy. They probably don't have a lot of equipment either. The best we've seen so far is a Dishka, which is uh, possibly able to destroy those vehicles, but it didn't look like they were able to land a hit. They took too much fire. And enemy forces are definitely confirmed around that road now. Oh, yeah. There they go. Did you see them hauling ass around that corner? Yeah, they're inside that building there. So everything south of the road, just directly south of it, along the road is where the enemy could be. Now, I'm also assuming we're probably going to see larger buildings in this game, like hospitals, military bases. So there's going to be much more uh, detailed operations than just, you know, your generic clear town. But this is a good operation to learn the German forces, to see all of their weapons and their capabilities for their mechanized units and for their tanks and for their infantry. And the differences between, like, for example, German uh, sappers here, engineers. Uh, these guys are really good at finding traps and things like that. Pioneer squads, as they're called. And it looks like they're tired, too, so you just basically want to chill out here. They're going to go up to the second floor. Wow, you can actually see them climbing buildings, like the, the stairs in the buildings. It's not modeled in, but... Oh, damn. All right, well, now the Germans are fighting a force with an RPG. Oh, hell yeah, 20 millimeter. That's what that was. Death machine opening up. Radioing back that they needed support. That's a great way to clear a town. Giant hole in the building now. Awesome, dude. Very cool. Yeah, this is not too bad. It, it feels about as clunky as Men of War does. Men of War is not a perfect game, and I mention that a lot all the time because that's like one of the big ones on the channel that everybody's enjoyed the most, including myself. Um, so this really feels like a, you know, you scale down the graphics, but you step up the terms of operations. If you're looking for something more detailed, Call to Arms is probably your jam. 
but I think this does a really good job of simulating all the uh, off-map stuff a little bit more realistically in terms of how it would be done in the real world, as were games like Call to Arms, which is kind of a more modern meta war, does a very good job of simulating kind of smaller scale combat, like for example, just within the city, so we wouldn't have seen the whole operation of getting to it or uh, having fire support outside of the city. So um, let's see what we can do here at Frings now. I want to see some more infantry battles. We've got our infantry coming up. Let's go ahead and start moving towards the uh, options to take cover, maybe? I wonder if there's options to take cover behind things like the, uh, the walls and whatnot. All right, well, three infantry squads there moving. We're going to put our main force on the road there. And we'll have our other units just behind the infantry to support. And like I mentioned, we have our off-map artillery, too, so now that we've got units nearby, our scout unit up here, we should be able to provide artillery if we want to. Uh, so we can use night vision or binoculars to see what's in front of us. Let's go ahead and get a little closer. Double-time it. Uh, reinforcements have arrived at Tornado IDS. Well, now we have the option to call in an airstrike. Now, how the hell would we do that? Uh, let's see. I believe that... Oh, yeah, there it is. We have air support now. Oh, hell yeah. Well, uh, let's go ahead and see if we can tell it to attack somewhere. There was certainly a lot of troops spotted here. We know there's some of these buildings. Let's just do it for the lols. Uh, let's see, point target right here. Let's see if we can hit this area here. And see what we can do. So it looks like those guys are going to guide the Tornado IDS in for a ground attack. This is going to be sweet. Now, we don't know what's there, but let's just pretend that there's a huge group of infantry just for time purposes. So we'll just say that there's like a, maybe two squads and a command unit that are holding the intersection. It is quite a valuable position to hold. It's close to the, uh, to the market square here. It does lead to the main road, and pretty much all their forces have fled north. So this will send a message, too, that they don't want to cause trouble. I also see some smoke here, so we're definitely still hitting some more artillery on us. Look at all of our units lined up, ready to go. That'll be pretty close to our units. I want to see how that airstrike comes in. I really hope it... We actually see it. I don't know where the countdown timer is. I haven't used air support before, so this will be fun. Uh, mission parameters, target, point target. All right, we got a report now. He's 30 seconds out. Let's watch for this aircraft now. I, I heard him a minute ago, so he must have been like getting into the area. So now they just radioed in and saying 30 seconds. I see a yellow square up at the top of the screen. Don't know if I can see the airplane. You can kind of see the generic background of the desert for the skybox, which is a little confusing, but let's see what happens. Oh, okay, here we go. All right, air support is inbound, boys. Here it comes. This is going to be it. Lots of enemies there. We got to hit them. Even friendly forces are firing from the distance over here. Oh, yeah, they're firing all the way over there. All right, we need that air support. Broken schnitzel. Come on, where is it? Attacking. There we go. Let me see those bombs, baby. Here he comes. I can hear him. He flew over. Give me those bombs. Yeah! Hell yeah! Nicely done. And there goes the plane. Well, that's the game, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching. That was cool. All right, if you're interested in the game, it's available on Steam. I'd love to do more real-time strategy games. Show that support. Raptor 1, out. Thanks, guys, for dropping by today. Hope you enjoyed.